Okay, our next uh, idea to understand is resistivity. So we need to look at what different factors will affect the resistance of a wire. This will lead us to this uh, definition of this term, resistivity. And then we're going to look at how we can um, actually use this term to work out the resistance of wires. So imagine a piece of wire like this. Um, what is going to affect its resistance are. Hopefully you can uh, think about that and work out that it's going to matter how long the wire is. It's going to matter what its cross-sectional area is. You might say the diameter or the radius, which will be correct, but we're going to think about the area. And obviously what it's made from, okay, different sorts of materials have different resistivities, okay, they'll have a different resistance. Um, according to what the metal is. That's the key thing to understand really in this, that the resistivity is the property of the metal. So once you know the resistivity, it's a little bit like density. If I told you the density of copper, you could work out the uh, mass of any size piece of copper. So if you know the resistivity of copper, you could work out the resistance of any um, copper wire as long as you knew its area and its length. So how is it going to be affected by these things? Well, let's look at length. Imagine this wire here, it's got a resistance of RT, a total resistance. But however long it is, it'll be made of lots of smaller wires, or just one after the other one, if you like. So we can split this wire and imagine it was just, well, I've just drawn two, but any number of sections of wire. Each one, like the first one, are with a resistance of R. Okay, so if this is N lots of L and has an area A, each one of these is a length L and has an area also equal to A. So what will the total resistance be? Well the total resistance is a series resistance, so we just add in all these in series, so the total resistance is just R plus R plus R plus R, however many R's you've got. So N lots of R is the total resistance. So in my example I've just got 2L, so the resistance is going to be 2R. But if I had any number NL, then the total resistance would be N times as much. This is just a proportional relationship, so hopefully you can see that the total resistance is just proportional to the length. Okay, I could have written RT here, but the resistance of the whole wire is proportional to the length. Okay, so cross-sectional area, a little bit different. Sometimes people think, oh, a bigger area will make it harder, but of course, if you've got, if you apply a voltage um, to a wire and there's more area, there's more electrons across any section through this wire, so more electrons will move. So you'll get a bigger current for the same potential difference, which means that you'll get a lower resistance. So imagine this wire here. This has got a length L again, but this time it's got an area of Na. What's that the same as? Well, that's the same as us taking our original wires and connecting them all in parallel, because the electrons are either going through this bit or through this bit or through this bit. So this is a parallel circuit. So our total resistance, as we know, 1 over RT is 1 over R plus 1 over R plus 1 over R, however many R's we need to give us a total cross-sectional area equal to NA. So 1 over the total resistance is however many of these 1's we've added together gives us N over R. If we um, invert both sides, we get RT is R over N. So as N gets bigger, the resistance, the total resistance of the wire goes down in proportional in proportion to the area. So in my example I've just got two A's so the resistance is half as much but in general if it's got N times the area then the resistance is 1 over N times as much which means the total resistance is proportional to 1 over the area. Okay very important to understand that not 1 over the diameter 1 over the area so if you double the diameter it'll have 4 times the area so only a quarter of the resistance. Okay, so we've got these two factors, R is proportional to L, R is proportional to 1 over A. We'd like to get rid of this proportional sign, but of course this depends on what the um, material's made from. Oh, sorry, what material the wire is made from, I should say. So we call this property resistivity. It's got this Greek letter rho, rougher resistivity, but it, I know it looks like a P, but it's a Greek letter rho. It gives us the equation R equals rho times this part here, which is just L over A. Okay, so the resistance of any wire is the resistivity times the length divided by the area. This is the cross-sectional area perpendicular to the current. Be careful in the exams. 
when they ask you uh, what this A stands for, it's tended to put area. Sometimes they're a little bit picky on it and they don't like you saying area because obviously it's got a surface area, it's got a cross-sectional area in lots of different directions. So the perfect kind of explanation of that would be the cross-sectional area perpendicular to the di Okay, so we need to be able to apply this um, formula. It's a fairly straightforward equation, but there's lots of uh, complications. So here are a few questions. Just talk you through these. Um, so in this one, we're working out the resistance of the leads. We've got the resistivity of copper. We've got the length of the leads when we've got their cross-sectional area. So we know our equ equation. We just put in the number. So here's a resistivity, 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters times 0 0.5 the length divided by 4 times 10 to the minus 7 the cross-sectional area as long as you're careful with the calculator then you should find that comes to 2.1 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay here's a second one um, just the same equation the other way around so this time we want to work out resistivity actually this is not the equation you get on the data sheet you get the one that says resistivity equals but the first thing you need to do is to rearrange that to get resistivity is RA over L and then again, no catches in here, so you just put in the numbers, here's the resistance, here's the resistivity, here's the length. Put it in your calculator carefully, and you'll get a resistivity of 9.7 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. Okay, this is where people will start to go wrong in questions. So a student measures the diameter of a wire as 0.36 millimeters. A 0.8 meter length of this wire is a resistance of 1.2 ohms. What's the resistivity? Okay. The key thing here is we've got the diameter of the wire and not its cross-sectional area. So the first thing we need to do is probably a separate calculation to find the area. Okay, so pi r squared for the area. Okay, the next thing we need to notice is we've got a diameter, so we need to divide the 0.36 by 2 to get 0.18. And then we need to notice it's in millimetres, so we need to turn it into metres, 10 to the minus 3. And then do that calculation, you'll find you get 1.2 times 10 to the minus 7 square meters for the area. I would always recommend you to do that as a separate calculation first to avoid mistakes. Then you can do your equation, so it's like the previous questions. There's the resistance, there's the res um, area, there's the length. That will give you an answer of 1.53 times 10 to the minus 7 ohm meters. Okay, this is getting uh, quite a hard question by now. So rear demister in a car has 12 0.8 meter wires in parallel. So across here you've got 12 wires all wired in parallel. So there'll be a strip at both sides. It's got to produce a power of 180 watts to demist the window. It's connected to the 12 volt battery. And the wires are 2 millimeter by 1 millimeters cross section. So if you were designing this, what resistivity of metal would do the job for you? Of course, you don't want a really good conductor because then you won't actually generate the heat, but then you don't want a very poor conductor um, because the current would be too low to generate the heat as well. So it's important for this kind of application we've got the right kind of resistivity of metal. So the first job is to work out what the current is. So there's various equations you can use for this, but I'm just doing a P equals VI. So I equals P over V, 180 watts, 12 volts. We need 15 amps to flow through this. Then we can work out the total resistance. So R equals V over I. 12 over 15 means the whole unit has to have a resistance of 0.8 ohms. But the whole unit consists of 12 wires. And be careful here, the 12 wires are in parallel. Um, so the area of one wire is 2 dot by 1 millimeter. So 1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 2 times 10 to the minus 3. 2 times 10 to the minus 6 square meters. We've got 12 of these wires, so the total area, because these are in parallel, the total area is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5 square meters. So to find the resistivity, RA over L. Um, so the re total resistance is 0 0.8. Here's the area, the total area of all the wires, divided by 0 0.8 meter length, means a resistivity of 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5 ohm meters. Just a coincidence that these two numbers are the same because. Um, the 0.8 for the resistance, the total resistance here, and the 0.8 for the length have cancelled each other out. So 2.4 times 10 to the minus 5 ohm meters. If I went and found that metal, I could make my rear demister out of a metal with that resistivity. Okay, one last little bit. Sometimes it's really handy to be able to do these things with ratios. So if you've got a wire of resistance R, and then you've got another wire made out of the same material, 
but it's twice as long, how could we work out the total resistance? Well, okay, I'm not sure you straight away thought, oh, that's 2R, two two R, twice the resistance. But there's a technique to do that which we can use more widely, so we'll try a nice simple example first. The way we do it is we say that R equals rho L over A, we knew that already, this is our first wire. So in our second wire, we're going to say R dash, the new resistance, is rho dash times L dash over A dash where these are our new resistivity, our new length and our new area. Okay, but what do we know? Well, the resistivity hasn't changed. It's the same kind of metal. The length is twice as long. The area is the same. So if we put these values in here for rho dash, L dash and A dash, then we'll end up with the new resistance is rho times 2L over A. If I take this 2 out of the front, then I get 2 times rho L over A. But rho L over A is over here. This was R. So R dash, the new resistance, is 2 times the old resistance. Okay, now that may look a little bit trivial, and you might think I didn't need to do all that trouble. Okay, but what you'll find is, with other questions, that's quite a handy technique to use. So, for example, if it's got twice the cross-sectional area, okay, here's our first wire, here's our second wire. Write these down, so same resistivity, same length. This time the area is twice as big, so A dash equals 2A. Put those numbers in, you'll notice key thing here is to understand the two A's on the bottom, so when I take it out of the front I get a half. So R dash is a half of the old resistance rho L over A. R dash equals a half R. Again, you might still be thinking, I knew that because you told me that the um, resistance was inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. But when you start to combine the two things, and you've got a wire with twice the length and half the diameter, Okay, then you need to think quite carefully, so same trick again. But this time, rho dash equals rho, length is twice as long. The area, because it's got half the diameter, the area is only a quarter as much. Okay, So if you put that in, you get 2L on the top, you get A over 4 on the bottom. The 4 um, will come up onto the top because it's divided by on the bottom, so we end up with 8 times rho L over A. So the second wire has got 8 times the resistance of the first wire. Okay, hopefully by this sort of stage you can see that um, you really need some maths to help you do this question. And this is a technique that comes up um, quite a lot later through the course, which is a handy way of comparing two things without having to go to all the trouble of doing the calculations. Or in fact, of course, sometimes you don't know the numbers, so you have to do it algebraically.